How are you? My name is Jackie Mancuso, and today I am joined by Max Doherty. He is an astrologer from Nashville, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the eclipses that are coming up, but we're also going to get to know Max's story and how he became who he is. So just a little bit of a background, how I met Max. Uh, there have been years that I've wanted another astrologer to read my synastry chart with my husband um, because I wanted to take my ego out of it. And I had been asking and asking and asking, and it never worked out until Paul's sister found Max. They both live in Nashville. And we got a reading from him, and it was very enlightening. Um, there was a lot of similarities between Max and us. We just vibe very well. And then Max and I started having some in-depth astrology conversations. So we're here today to learn about how Max got to where he is, and then we'll tell you guys about the upcoming eclipses. So hi, Max. How are you? Hey, Jackie. Thanks for that intro. I'm doing good. I'm hanging in there most days and others, um, yeah, thriving and uh, others just surviving. But yeah, that's um, a beautiful way to put our, you know, how we met and synchronicity really did work because just how you were introduced to me through family and things like that. And that's the way these things tend to work. And I've met so many beautiful people through practicing astrology and, and doing sessions for folks. So me, myself, I've been practicing in a professional sense for about three years. And before that, I was introduced to astrology through my own awakening and series of events, seeing numbers and synchronicities and, and all of those things. And I would say that was about 12 years ago. And so I was going through that mode and Googling this number and that and and eventually one thing led to another, and I was reading these long articles about um, astrology, about these grand cycles and um, and the grand cycle of the earth and how it kind of goes to this 26,000 year, you know, great cycle. And so for myself, that was really eye opening because it was the first time I looked at my own birth chart. And, you know, I was putting that, you know, in the context of the human story and history and all that, you know, astrology has changed all of that for me over, over these years. And for me, that was really the catalyst I needed to break through my own story or to dissolve some things that just weren't true, to make sense of other things that had happened. And I, and I feel like that's why astrology is so useful for so many of us, because it can do that. It provides this blueprint, but it also provides so many answers and usually in, in hindsight. Um, so we can look at our chart and we, you know, when, once we're really digging in or we hear through a professional um, it helps us make sense of so much that's happened and unfolded in, in our life to that point. So from that point and, you know, about 10 or 12 years ago, um, I began just I began to become more interested and more fascinated with it and started to meet others who were who were of the same mindset. And eventually, um, I guess it was the covid years, the lockdown, you know, it forced a job change. And I took a fun little job at a metaphysical shop that was close to my home. And it was a moment where I was working in the studio and, and doing some really creative stuff and I was just having fun with it, but they, they did readings, you know, tarot and, and, and their astrologer that was doing the readings um, never came back after, you know, we sort of rebooted society and everybody went back to work and reopened basically. And so I, I remember I would just talk to coworkers and colleagues about a lot of this stuff. And they were like, man, Max, you're really good. You should do this. Blah, blah, blah. And of course I was fighting and I'm like, I don't know shit. I don't know anything. What are you? You've got the wrong guy. Like literally. Uh, and one thing led to another there. And once they reopened in the sense of doing readings, um, they do like weekly readings at the store. Um, they sort of just uh, pressured me, peer pressured me to the table. And so I started doing that every Friday and it was uh, really incredible how it happened because from there I was so scared, just scared out of my mind. Uh, am I going to have any value to give to people and, and all of this? And and apparently I had more within me, as most of us, all of us do, uh, than I thought I did originally. So I was doing that every week, every Friday. And um, since then, it's only expanded my service to others in that way. I don't yet have, um, I, I did a website initially. I retooled that. It's sort of offline at the moment. And uh, social media, I fight that. I know I need to do it. I should. I will be doing it. But I really wanted to take my time with this and transition into being a professional astrologer or just a spiritual worker in in my own way and in my own timing. And that's pressure that I haven't caved into. So, so yeah, Jackie. You know, as we met, it was through word of mouth, and that's how everyone has found me. And um, 
that really gives me a lot of confidence because I've done about 900 personal sessions to date. And that's earth chart readings and transits. I usually include the two naturally when I'm doing a session, um, as a lot of astrologers do, things kind of come up. Uh, synastry readings, I got into that uh, in the past year. And and through that, yeah, I've done about 900 sessions. And the thing with astrology, as with practicing anything, whether it's medicine or herbalism or anything that, that requires um, study, you can read all the books you want and internet articles on, and they're very helpful. You can take classes and courses, and I recommend that to any practicing astrologer, beginner, or professional uh, seasoned veteran. But you really only truly learn from just doing that work with others because we learn from each other constantly. It's that give and take. And uh, so much of life just leads the way from that point. So, yeah, I've um, stepped away this summer because that two and a half years, you know, as you know, sort of, uh, you know, I didn't really have a plan and exhausted me. And and I was like, oh, I need to balance my life around this. I need to really do this right. So, yeah, I've I've been all fine this summer. and, And this talk is actually my first uh, venture back out into the uh, into the light with uh, you know, something like astrology and, and you know since the last eclipse cycle I guess since April May so is that what we're going to be discussing today is we are yeah. yeah and I yeah. guess this is a good time to make note um what's it called like talking to the fourth wall breaking the fourth wall when you like tell the audience stuff that they're not supposed to know Max <laughs> tried recording in like april right around that other eclipse season um and for one reason or another the zoom gods decided that the file was going to be corrupted so that episode wasn't meant to come out so it is interesting that this is like our revamp and now we get another eclipse cycle to talk about um <laughs> uh, and i I also love that you are just coming, like you're hitting the ground running. You're coming out of this hermit point of not looking at a chart for so long with the most public way that you can do so. So I know that this is going to be a wonderful discussion. Um, It's rusty on both ends. I just pulled up these charts right before we started recording. So uh, I also want the audience to know that it's amazing to have another astrologer to talk with. This is like a language. And I feel like I'm always that teacher, which is wonderful. I love teaching astrology, but like sometimes I need to bounce my ideas off of someone else. So this is just so refreshing. Yeah, I agree. Um, and it, it then that's again, how we all learn and how us um, who are in service to others is learning is through not just serving others, but, but you know, having these conversations with others who are doing the same sort of work every day. And yeah, you're right. Uh, this may be <laughs> brilliant or a huge mistake, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, but that again, it speaks to the way I get into this, you know, I got thrown to that table and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And, and so it doesn't scare me as much now to have, let's have a conversation when you haven't necessarily been into it with some of this energy. Um, and, and I do, it, you know, feel Jackie, like, you now that I've looked back at this and, and I feel all of us should do this at times is we, we should step away from some of the information. And that's not just what we're personally studying or, or whatever it may be. And that could be for a day. It could be for yeah, a few months. But any amount of you know hermit-ness uh, can sometimes really benefit us because we come back with a different perspective. And sometimes we just need to attend to things in life. And so I do feel really refreshed in that. And, um, and yeah, it's always refreshing talking to you about these things. So yeah, I can't wait to see where we go today with this and just see what comes up. Yeah, same. Um, I Eclipses for you just seems so natural. Like I, the first time that we talked, we weren't even going with eclipses and you just went right in. So I'm glad that the timing worked out with this as well. So let's just start. Tell me what you see when you look at the chart for the 14th of October. We have our Libra solar eclipse. What you got? <laughs> well, so yeah, this eclipse cycle... Um, so for anyone, just a quick, a brief on eclipses, the reason I love them and, and most astrologers would probably agree to some extent, they're so very important. And this goes back to the ancients, man. I mean, obviously they were setting up stone circles around things like great eclipse cycles mm-hmm. for a reason, because they have a profound impact. And it's one of those impacts that you can't deny, you know, you go out in the sky and it's like sun, the moon is big and red and the sun has a ring of fire. It, you know, it's, um, it's one of those things that it's undeniable, whether you are an astrologer or not, whether you care about this, this stuff or not. And so eclipses are the absolute truth. And there are those markers throughout the year and throughout the years, really, that our life really is dictated by in so many ways. 
huge pivotal moments, big life changes, circumstance changes, things happening to us or through us or around us that have just the greatest um, importance in our life, whether we know it at that time or not. And the way eclipses work in general is that every 18 months, basically, what we call the North Node, which is the dragon's head, it's the it's the North Star of our birth chart, and the South Node, which these points, we won't go into it too much, but they have to do with the Earth, Moon, and Sun, and the ecliptic, and things like that. But it's where the North and South Node change signs. So every 18 months, they, they change. And when you're looking at a chart, it's a bit counterintuitive, because the stars and the planets and whatnot, they appear to be going one direction all in this fluid motion, but the eclipse points, the north south node, they're obviously moving against the grain, they're going backwards. So when you're looking at this from that standpoint, every 18 months, you not only have that, but then every, you know, some people may or may not know this, every 18.6 years, um, the eclipses and the points, the exact point in the sky, they come back full circle to exactly where they were when we were born. Mm -hmm. So it's the ultimate cycle in life. And and so, yeah, people may not realize that every 18, 19 years, we're sort of like closing a book and then opening another. And we can always look back and see that there are these big cycles in our life that are coming up to either repeat or, you know, to be cherished and not redone and, um, you know, are repeated with a higher elevated, you know, way of going about it, you know, a more enlightened way. Uh, you know, I won't do this again. I won't do that. And some of this feels oddly familiar. You have a lot of deja vus and stuff. But those cycles, to me, really dictate so much. And when you look at this in that pers from that perspective, there's also that nine-year point in between, as we call it the inverse return, where the eclipse cycle is taking place nine years in between every 18. They are also huge moments in our life. So for any of us to look at our life, every nine to 18 years are, are big, obviously, and you know this. And so when we're looking at this eclipse cycle here, we have, we're just really coming out of, and we're six months into the new cycle of Aries being the new North Node sort of point for us in transit and Libra being the South. And we're coming out of that, th this eclipse cycle here marks the finality of really that energy that we all just lived out post the um, the virus years and, and all of that. That 18 months was the full, first full like society's going again. We're all back out here doing our thing, whatever that may be. And so this in um, in retrospect is like, okay, we we are we have this series of eclipses where Libra is going to be leading us in with the solar. And then on the back end, we have like, yeah, five degrees Taurus, I think it is on, mm -hmm. on the moon side of things. And that's the last eclipse in Taurus that we're going to have for at least, what, nine or 10 years. We won't have another one in that energy for quite some time. So this, you know, when we're looking at the chart, this eclipse series for us is one um, this time this year it, to look back on and say, okay, you know, when we're looking at this chart, obviously we have a little dance party going on in the sky at the South Node where we're going to have this new moon in Libra. We have Mercury who's entering that dance party. We have Mars who's going to be not too far away. And in the days leading into this eclipse, Mars is finishing its transit in Libra. So Mars will be at like that 29 degree point that week leading in. And then we'll be, I think it's Scorpio. It looks like it, like maybe uh, just one or two degrees. I think it's like one degree of Scorpio at the time of this eclipse. Yeah. And so a few important things there. A, that Libra energy and that new moon energy is asking us, okay, we had all this energy in Taurus and Scorpio. How does life feel? How balanced? does it feel? Because one of the big themes with the last eclipse cycle is, is identifying what is valuable to us in life. Where are, do our values really reside? You know, how comfortable are we in life? How satisfied do we feel? How stable do we feel? What things do we need to do or create a plan for and, and et cetera? What actions do we need to be taking to create that stability, that comfort, that trajectory that any of us want in life? And so this first one in Libra, this new moon, is a fresh start to take a lot of action in the direction of finding balance. And it really is sort of a wake-up call, too, because if there's still anything still floating around in our day-to-day -day for any of us right now that isn't in line with these values we've identified or felt, that that is not alignment with me. I don't value this person anymore, that relationship or this habit, it is giving me nothing at this point. That shit is fucking killing me. Um, 
this eclipse cycle is going to let us know like, hey, um, how you feeling? How you feeling about that right now? Because if you're not feeling great, it's time to set this thing into action, man. And so the plans we may have created and been working on, and these would have been really prompted in the series of eclipses from April and May, because we had this really warrior-esque princess warrior energy come about with that 29 degree Aries um, eclipse in that cycle. And we had that Scorpio, you know, that final release, this ultimate purging and detoxing. And now all of us have had all summer to really let that energy move through us and clear us out and start setting these new intentions, which this Aries North Node, ju just to highlight what this Eclipse series is going to be about, um, Aries North Node energy for all of us and collectively is going to be about, yeah, taking action, taking responsibility for our own fate, our journey, our path. It really is an Eclipse cycle that is the fool in t the tarot. It's like, okay, this sets the stage for a grander, a big cycle for all of us. And it's one word, we're never going back to the old normal. I think all of us kind of know that now. There is no, you know, even the new normal is falling apart every day and coming undone. You know, there is no such thing, right? So for all of us, it's, you know, we're, we're still continuing to let go of what is not us, but it is this fiery energy now in the sky that, and within ourselves, that's like, it's time to do the damn thing. It's time to act on these plans that we may have been sitting on for some time, these dreams, our purpose. So many of us do that and we'll find any excuse in the book to not do it on any given day. I'm as guilty as any body when it comes <laughs> to that. And this warrior act action oriented energy can be so helpful because the way you make decisions with Aries energy is all gut instinct. It's all impulsive, really. It's very impulsive, instinctual, like, boom, how does that feel? Like, do it, don't do it. You know, and so when it comes to yeah, habits or diet, lifestyle changes, like that was a big part of this Taurus cycle, financial situations, there's going to be so many of us who are now going for that, you know, that donut or, you know, this cigarette or this at night out for uh, drinking again. And our gut impulse, you know, I'm not judging any of those, obviously, but whatever the decision may be on any given day, answering that text from that person that gut instinct is going to be stronger than ever. And it's going to be trying to serve us into making those yes, no, you know, answers to every situation in a way that serves us and the other person, because Libra energy is all about win-win. It's about balance. It's about making sure that what we do can be self-serving so long as it doesn't hurt someone else. And this is going to be a time period for so many of us. And this Libra period with Mars down there is going to be one where a lot of us are going are gonna to realize where that balance is in our life. And for so many of us, I feel like, and I don't know how you feel, Jackie, working with others, because I haven't been in months, but we put ourselves on the back burner and we feel like doing anything feels selfish. Mm -hmm. So for that mom who's going, it's back to school, we got to spend for my kids, all that, but she hasn't got her nail done, nails done, her hair done in months. But, and she has the money now and she wants to, but she just feels guilty. She doesn't yeah. know why, but she just feels guilty. But what's your take on that when it comes to Aries energy and being self, you know, a little selfish in a good way? That was um, my most, I was so excited when the nodes were about to move into Aries and Libra because I was seeing it so much as like letting go of the people pleasing, letting go of putting yourself last um, so that you don't rock the boat, you know, letting go of not speaking up for your needs because you don't want to upset the people around you. Uh, I actually, I was just talking about this this morning with that being like taking care of yourself isn't selfish by putting yourself first, by healing your own trauma, by healing your own triggers, you're allowing yourself to just genuinely shine for the world. And you don't have to try so hard. You don't have to make sure that you're doing what this person needs to be happy because just by shining your own light and being your Aries North Node self is going to do that regardless. I also wanted to make note that the North Node moving into Aries, I called this like two years ago and I'm seeing it happening that it's like the great um, fire, like the great quitting of the jobs. Like everyone's starting yeah. for themselves, North Node Aries, like you have to do it yourself. And I know that you said that's one of your big goals right now. It is. Yeah. And I think, I feel like you did, how did you put it in our first, when we talked about this, you were like, this is that fucking energy. I think is how you put it. <laughs> and it is that in a big way, because 
I think for a lot of us, yeah, we went back to work. We, you know, when I when when the world stopped, it, it was sort of a blessing because we all got to reassess where we were in life and our job, you know, and and so so many of us sitting at home for those years, almost a year, 18 months for some people. You know, now we've had another 18 months to be back out in the grind and doing our back to the old routine if it works still or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And I think for a lot of people, because I bartend at the airport, I see this every day. God, they're burnt out, man. They're exhausted. It hasn't taken but a year, a year and a half to be back when it there is a fucking in the air where it's like, I don't know how much longer I can do this. Mm-hmm. There has got to be more to life than this old repeating cycle. And the eclipses are such a beautiful portal and window to step into something new. And that's what this chart screams to me when I look at it is, yeah, we have that Libra new moon. And I think you put it beautifully that people pleasing is something I think we can all relate to. And that's something that's really going to be addressed throughout this whole 18 month period, which we're a solid six ish months into now. And it, it's not that we don't want to help others or be there for a partner or friends or whatever it may be. But so long as we're not suffering for it, so long as we're not the one falling on the back burner, so to speak. And when you have something, a big change maker like Uranus transiting Taurus, and we'll be wrapping that up here in the next year, two years, basically, with Jupiter being in Taurus, you know, we're going to have a lot of changes to the material world around us. And even how society is functioning that we can either go with the flow with or make changes around or and adapt to or, or sort of suffer for it. And what I mean by that is, you know, if we look at the last time, you know, in every eclipse is going to highlight Uranus and where where that big planet is at. So eclipses are so electromagnetic. Uranus is such a game changing planet with its magnetism, its electricity, electricity. Um, In Taurus, the last time it was there was like during the FDR New Deal era. So some people may be aware or not, but, you know, systems are changing the material world, the financial systems. So much of this is going to be changing before our eyes and we're going to see a lot of chaos in the making before new systems come in and take those places of the old. One thing could be like central bank digital currency. We're hearing this come up a lot. It's uh, a controversial topic. Mm -hmm. Certain people feel certain ways. I get that. For all of us, though, we need to be looking at this from the the point of view of where do I have a plan? Where do I fit in here? What is my plan? What's our family's plan? How are we going to proceed into this new world and into this new making of the world and make sure we have a proper place for myself, for ourselves? So that's the Aries with the Libra. It's your community, but it's also you. It's your family, but it's it's you. And for a lot of people, when we look at a sign like Libra, we only look, we think of relationships, obviously, with Libra. And for so many of us, we may just get tripped up on like, that's just relationships with people. But no, it's relationships with the world. It's relationships with people, places, and things. So again, relationships to our personal habits, our possessions, our pets. Yeah, people in our lives, our loved ones, our lover, um, places where we live, where we work. All those relationships are going to be up for full review. And this eclipse chart, to me, really speaks to that review process that this this is a beautiful and blessed window to review these material aspects with the things and the places, especially these Taurus aspects with Jupiter being in place there and sitting essentially directly opposite of where, you know, Mars is going to be heading into Scorpio during this first eclipse. Having Jupiter to anchor that Taurus energy is such a blessing because we have so much angelic energy trying to guide us so much synchronicity so much that's trying to just prompt us with impulses, with downloads to tell us, you know, yeah, what, what that relationship should feel like. And if it doesn't feel right, what to do about it. And if it does, how to capitalize on that further so that we can set up ourselves for success, for abundance, for a proper place in this new world. And with Mars heading into Scorpio, that one degree, you know, to me, Jackie, when I saw that first chart, that eclipse, this first one at 14, uh, the 14th of October, when I look at Mars, 29 degrees Libra, that is the ultimate like placement for me of marriage, of a business partnership. Like 29 degrees Libra is like that contractual, you know, it's a sacred partnership. And so there's going to be a lot of us under pressure in our lives uh, heading into this eclipse, where if we put off something that isn't working, 
especially with our direct uh, counterpart at home or a business partner, a boss, even things like that. Just the height of the relationships that represent our day to day. Boy, Mars is going to be in there like drilling up the emotion, really like heading you right into Scorpio and saying like, you can't hold this in any longer. There's a volcano that's going to erupt and you best start to let it out. Because if you don't, by the time we get to like the back end of this eclipse or even heading into the holiday season when Mars is going through Scorpio for six weeks into Thanksgiving, then going into Sagittarius into Christmas, that that Mars transit is Mars is going to be sitting with a lot of the other personal planets this year. And and this is going to be one of those times where you, we we would all be wise to really honor what's coming up for us if something feels imbalanced or not, to communicate that with the person in our life. Because trying to hold it in, you want to talk about pressure cooker, I foresee a lot of pressure just really being expressed and coming out full force at per, perhaps the absolute worst time, like with your family in a holiday gathering. Like those can be intense anyway but you talk about this eclipse alignment and what that could spell for the months to come i think that's one thing that really sp speaks out to me um what's your feeling when you look at you know some of the personal planets in this chart or the eclipse the first eclipse chart yeah when i um when i was looking at this this church just now this theme of changing our values and what matters to us is screaming at me so the new moon eclipse in Libra. And then, so we look at Venus to see the ruler teaching for the audience. So Venus mm -hmm. right now in this chart is in um, Virgo. Virgo is mutable earth. It's changing things up. Venus is what you value. So I see this as very much just like readjusting where you place your value. And then with the whole Uranus in Taurus talk, changing up the money aspect, changing up what we use to trade. I feel like this can be the start of people turning more into that age of Aquarius energy, turning more into that bartering energy. You don't necessarily need to pay dollars for services. You can do services for services, goods for services, vice versa. This just feels so very, um, yeah, fresh and new and detached from Mars entering Scorpio. Like, let's use our energy and our ambition to get rid of that what we just finished up that South Node in Scorpio feel, like letting go of having to rely on other people, having to intertwine with other people. I see this as this is what, like, this is what I have to offer. What can you give me for this? And then yes. also we just, before we started recording, we had a whole Yod talk, um, but the Yod really highlights the quincunx aspect. And seeing this, we have Uranus quincunxing the new moon and quincunxing the, the eclipse. This is so much pressure. Uranus in Taurus, new moon in Libra, they have nothing in common. They're not the same <laughs> element. They're not the same modality. They don't, you know, Uranus is in a feminine, new moon is in a, a masculine sign. It's just like, you hear you have to do it different. And this is your new beginning. How are you going to do it differently? I love that. And I'm really glad you touched on the bartering and like the community aspects. That's kind of what I was hinting at when I even brought up something like central bank digital currency. <laughs> yeah. Uh, surprise, surprise. There may be some of us who, who may not want to be fully a part of a system like this where everything's digital and there's no money, there's no cash. Yeah. Everything's controlled. Everything's yeah. surveilled. We have enough of that already. And you, you know, Guys, I have a feeling there's a lot more around the corner. Mm -hmm. So this is such a brilliant time to be thinking about who are those people in my life that I can work with differently in a way that, yeah, it's more intimate. It's more of an exchange. Like that is the beauty of Libra. It's, it's not the shadow side is tit for tat, but the beauty is like mutual benefit, mutual exchange. It's not so much of us back scratch as it is like, Here's what I have to offer. I feel like you have something really great to offer there. If you ever are interested in trading these offers, like, let me know, dude, I got you. Mm -hmm. Trading this service for that or this, you know, some vegetables that you grew for, you know, maybe some help doing some handyman work. You know what I mean? Like it, it can yeah. really work that way. And I also love the yod aspect that you highlighted because that pressure, you know, one thing about Libra, and this has come up so much in my readings with clients who who have their nodal axis, either south or north node in Libra and vice versa with the Aries, is one theme that I think, again, we can all relate to in some way, but it really is going to show up and be highlighted, is codependence. So 
the the shadow side of the age of Aquarius in some ways also being an air sign it's related to Libra is is going to be yeah that mass surveillance controlled and being codependent on this system mm. that process mm. this organization but when it comes to the beautiful aspect of Libra one of those things is like you can put it differently and say we can be interdependent so this eclipse cycle and the ones to come over these next few years, man, like this one, especially with that Libra energy and finishing up the Taurus Scorpio cycle, because the, these kind of like transitionary eclipse cycles really do bring up for full review. And I don't mean review is like, I'm just going to sit on my bed on my phone and have some downloads about the day in the last six months. Like no, these are reviews is like, I'm in an all out thrash with my partner right now. And this shit is imploding before my eyes and how did I get to this? Well, we know how because we had a lot of reviews leading into that moment, right? But it's about being codependent or someone being codependent on you. And in a lot of my readings for clients that have that in their birth chart, this shows up in their personal life throughout life. But for all of us right now, it would be wise to um, going into this to realize that some of the biggest explosion in, in energy or Uranus making sudden changes or sudden explosive emotions with that Mars energy and, and Scorpio Venus, like you said, is immutable. It's in that Virgo energy, but quickly is going to be catching up um, to Mars uh, later this year. Mm -hmm. And we just had the Venus retrograde, which brought up relationship reviews of all kinds through, you know, so for folks that don't know, that was August, uh, July and August mm -hmm. and 40 days and 40 nights of reviews. So I don't know how people are feeling about that, but this is going to be the period. If you don't know how you feel yet about what was coming up for you at that time or, who's in your life, your part, your relationship, your intimate loved one. This is going to be eclipse series and, a, and an eclipse itself that really brings that up full force. So if you are codependent anyway, it's going to come at you full steam and say, this is not working. <laughs> one of us says, I'm going to die. Like this is just <laughs> fucking over, dude. And so there's going to be a lot of us feeling that it could be a job. We're codependent on this job and we can't take it anymore. We're going to just strangle our boss or they're, they're going to just kick us out because it's, it's burning up before our eyes or, or yeah, it could be a marriage. It could be a new love that we, somebody we just met, we've only been dating a few months. It could be a sibling that they've been just draining us constant text and drama and problems and, I can't take this anymore. They're obviously, are they codependent on me? Are they coping just by me answering their text every day? Uh, bro, probably. <laughs> so yeah, Jackie, this is going to be one that um, there's going to be some changes made for us as eclipses always do. I and love your, I love your take on that. I didn't look at that, the codependency, but that is super highlighted and that makes so much sense. And then even bringing it into the 28th, into the, the lunar eclipse that we have, there's that huge opposition between Mars in Scorpio and we have Jupiter down in Taurus. Like that is highlighting the axis of resources, values. Like I feel like money issues and codependency with money is going to be a huge theme for this whole yes. eclipse season. Yeah. A great segue, by the way. That was beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, when we're looking at that, the latter end of this and that full moon energy with the last eclipse we're going to have in Taurus for quite some time, A, there's obviously a huge silver lining in the fact that the moon is not going to be far off from Jupiter. So again, we have this grand, um, this wise divine arch angelic energy guiding us and always is ancestors guardian angels our own higher self and jupiter represents all that abundant energy that's here to serve us from a spiritual point of view so the the real silver lining is we've got jupiter looking out for us man but when it comes to eclipses you can almost always expect that the trigger points and the first like dominoes start to fall in the first solar eclipse yeah it, it's sort of counterintuitive for me to this day because it's a new moon it's like it's, it's new beginnings and it's fresh and I'm going to just set some intentions and whatever. But dude, it usually works backwards to that, <laughs> in, my, in my opinion, because that full moon is just waiting and things are going to become manifest day to day to day. And by the way, like at the time of this recording, it, today is October 4th. We're already in the window. You may edit and release this podcast, obviously, in the days to come or even weeks. And people may look back at this eclipse. And I will also say just really quickly. I find the best way to look at eclipses is almost always actually in the rear view hmm. because there is no way to predict what's going to happen. Yeah. We can give ourselves um, 
good information and highlight things and good insights come through. But it's almost always in the, the days after an eclipse cycle, the month, the weeks and months that we really recognize what has taken place and we can really implement things. We can really move with it. But just to help people understand what may unfold or have unfolded if you're watching this after the eclipses have occurred, that full moon energy, like you said, with that Taurus values, um, personal feelings about oneself, self-esteem, mm. sense of worth, um, how much confidence do you have? Again, how stable, how comfortable do you feel in your own body day to day? How present are you? That energy directly opposed to that scorpionic energy down in this in that spectrum. This is going to be that full moon that really brings all of that to the surface in terms of emotion. Or yeah, like you said, how like the financials, things break almost like a Mercury retrograde esque energy getting fired, getting a new job with a beautiful opportunity that you didn't see coming, a car breaking down, or getting finally approved for that new auto loan that you've been praying for. And finally, you worked out a relationship with a family member that you've been on the rocks with for years, and they come through and help you as a co-signer. Like, these are the kind of things that can happen during a full moon like this. And more than that, with the relationship aspect, because again, we're leading into that Libra and Aries energy, it's going to be one of those full moons where it's a, let we should talk about this. The first solar eclipse is the day after the first Friday, the 13th in a long time in October. So talk about foreboding. Um, oh, wow. So spooky <laughs> season is here and, and we're going to have that. And then we're going to have a full moon right near Halloween, which we haven't, you know, it doesn't happen every year. So there's going to be this element of inner childlike energy, this feel goodness to it. Again, with Jupiter there, there's going to be a lot of material things like, yeah, good habit. Things there's going to be good reason to find pleasure, to take satisfaction in what we're doing. But there's going to be equal amount of an ample energy in the air and effects of things that we may still be doing or taking part in that just don't serve us anymore. They are maybe yeah, people pleasing. They're serving someone else or they're serving our a part of us that it worked for a while. I enjoyed it thoroughly. But now that shit is wrecking my health, dude. Like, I am just falling apart. I don't know. How, you know, you've got a friend that texts you. And it's like you're thinking uh, to the bar again. <sighs> like, I don't want to let them down. But if I go out and drink one more time, I think my liver is going to just fall out of my body. You know, <laughs> it's it's that kind of energy. And we may have, like, yeah, the worst hangover of our life around, the, you know, just as an example. But this is really a period where when we drill down that chart a little bit further. One of the things that um, that really speaks to me about this, and let me ahead the solar again, is when we're looking at that amplification of all that, you know, opposition of the sun and Mercury and Mars being on one side, South Node's that far off, and the other three, the personal planets are in Scorpio, Uranus and Jupiter and the moon are at the other end. And when we look at this from a more like collective point of view, um, at the time of this recording, yeah, the Speaker of the House in the U.S. just got ousted. It's the first time it's ever happened in U.S. history. One thing that Libra and Aries represents in a certain sense is like social justice, uh, th things in a political spectrum, things in a, yeah, you know, even from a criminal justice standpoint and, and all of that. And I feel like this eclipse series and the one in the spring are so super important. Because there may be some things taking place on the on the whole world stage, but especially the U.S., that feel really jarring. Complete chaos is about to ensue. Like we're but we're all like secretly reading news articles, and we're like, I'm, I'm a little freaked out right now. Like, Speak for I, I yourself. I'm I'm riding the wave, <laughs> but I get <laughs> you, where bro. Going. But you know what I mean. Like it's yeah. like this shit's uh yeah, but yeah. There's secretly a part of me like you that's like <laughs> I was born for this. Like yeah. yes. I can't wait because the old world's been the old, the old ways been broken for some time. I think we all kind of know that in some ways. So there's going to be an aspect to this when it comes to what's unfolding on the world stage or the U S stage that is, it's going to be storybook esque and it's going to lead us right into the, to the 2024 election. And for so many of us, there's going to be this um, continued separations taking place and divisiveness that we're seeing polarization crazy extremes of energy and emotion both on the world stage and then personally in our family 
because of political beliefs, because of ideology and all these things. And it's going to separate this whole process. And, and the eclipses really, they hit this on the head, separating the wheat from the chaff, meaning that we don't necessarily have to choose a side, but we do need to choose a way of looking at these, at what we value and our ideals and all that in a way that makes us feel good. It makes us feel like we're on the right side of our own personal history. It makes us feel like we're connected with other like minds and souls that are on the same wavelength as, as we are. So we can ride that this wave together because who knows what all this holds, but there's obviously a dynamic opposition in the sky on, on the latter part of this eclipse cycle. And so we could see a lot of secrets and information coming to light, things happening on the world stage that are really, again, sort of jarring. And some they're like, God, I knew it. Like, finally. Um, and we sort of feel like redeemed by that, that unfolding. Because, yeah, we're entering a new age. And part of that is the, the whole Pluto return for the U.S. too. The old is collapsing. And you've talked about this, I believe, a lot. Um, we're going to see the rebirth of a lot of countries, but more, not, maybe none more so than the United States itself. For So for a lot of your viewers who live here, and probably a lot of us that and a lot of those watching, yeah, who knows what this is going to look like once this happens. And it's going to take decades, truly, but this is the pivotal decade. And a lot of folks have foretold that, you know, as we enter the heart of this decade, 2024, we're a few months away from that. It feels weird to say. Yeah, 2025 and six, while your honest finishes up its tourist cycle, mm -hmm. it's going to be reshaped really heartedly in these years. And so the only thing we can do at the end of the day is, and I know it sounds selfish, but look out for ourselves and, and base that plan around our values. Like, what do I value, man? Like, what means the world to me? What people, what places, what things? And how can I give more of myself to those things? And if there are other things that you feel fired up about or you want to be a part of collective movements or, you know, uh, charitable organizations, volunteerism in this area or that one, there is no better time to let, if you feel ignited in that way, to step out there and fucking just do it. Just do it. Let that energy out in that way. That could be a super healthy way to, to allow an outlet for this, because if not, it can be so instead of either explosive with loved ones and friends and stuff for no reason at all are impulsive because we haven't made those decisions about what we value and what, you know, what means the world to us, what, where our hearts reside in that equation. So I may have rambled a bit there, but I always come back to the politics. You know me, I can't stay away from it. And the eclipses, man, when I even woke up, because again, at the time of this recording and saw that Kevin McCarthy was ousted like that yesterday, I'm thinking like, Boy, the shit show is here, dude. Like, we're about to just watch this, Jack. And like, I know you're in tune with a lot of that too, Jackie, but it, it's going to be really interesting to see how this year finishes up. And even financially, um, a lot of people have said we're in for a recession and then they start to say, no, it's not going to happen. It's going to be a soft landing from all those years that after the 08 crisis that they lowered interest rates and all that. I, for one, feel like there is going to be a pretty big financial shakeup and that Taurus energy highlights that to me. When I look at this chart and I'm like, there's going to be some things that drop in October that are financially related that may affect all of us in some ways. I hope I'm wrong or I hope it's really positive. But my eyes are on that right now for my own personal, you know, a situation, sure. I guess. Sure. So, yeah, does that segue into any other like things that come to mind for you as I ramble, as I, as I always do? And sorry, I'm a little stuffy. Y'all, I've, uh, <laughs> I've been sick off and on for a while and now. I can, my nose spray is already wearing off. So. <laughs> Here we go. I just appreciate you coming on while you're not feeling the greatest to help us with all of this knowledge. So it's it's all good. Are you still feeling okay? You want to keep continuing? Uh, I can tell the stuffiness is getting, uh, uh, you know, but no, I'm, I'm not bailing on you, dude. I've bailed too many times. So <laughs> what do you feel is the most important? You know, when you look at this cycle and, you know, and, and, and you know, what, what to you when you look at the lunar end of this, that full moon energy, what 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 is highlighted for you like how have you been trying to help people through whatever you know what's coming up for you in your sessions around this energy you know honestly my brain is still like i can't get out of that that solar eclipse i can't get out of that aries libra i'm trying to bring myself back now to this taurus scorpio um and as you were 
not rambling. You were channeling and everything you said <laughs> held great value. Well, thank you. <laughs> you brought up a lot of really good points that I wasn't even thinking of. Um, but a few things came up as you were talking about all of that. So the first thing was the the Pluto return, right? The US Pluto return. Because even though this is a full moon in Taurus, the sun is in Scorpio and Pluto rules Scorpio. So I feel like that's going to hold a huge weight on this full moon. So whatever that means, whatever illusions are going to be exposed during this eclipse, you know, during this lunar eclipse, that could have a lot to do with the fall of the United States. And even like, yes. I feel slow saying that, but that's typically what happens during the Pluto return is that the society falls and you have to start over and you can go into it with a fear-based mentality, or you can go into it with the, I don't know where Jackie gets her lunacy, but like, I'm so excited. I feel like I've been naturally preparing for this. You know, I'm not doing like the fear mongering. You got to have your hoard of food and have your hoard of supplies, but I just, have been surrounding myself with people who have skills that are real. Like I'm married to a mechanic. Our friend was an Eagle Scout. Like I have gardener friends. Like I feel so supported. And it's not about like, am I going to be okay on my own? Like, no, I'm placing myself in a community where I benefit them and they benefit me. So that's where I'm feeling this like fall of the US with all that Pluto return stuff. But then I also wanted to touch on the energy of transmutation. And I can't remember exactly what you were talking about, but it was something about, oh, like the family dynamic breaking up because of, you know, like stuff is going extremely left, extremely right. And it's not like you have to pick a side, but you do have to like find your place. Mm -hmm. um, and that can cause a lot of nasty emotions. It can cause a lot of anger. It can cause a lot of abandonment. Um, but this theme of transmutation has been strong in my readings and in general and seeing the sun in Scorpio with Mercury and Mars like that is the sign of transformation we're thinking about it we're talking about it we're Mars acting on it I feel like this is going to be a huge opportunity for us to see the shit that we don't want to see and take the unwanted feelings and literally alchemize them into love and whatever else comes out of that and community and collaboration that's a beautiful way to put it. And I'm glad you touched on the collaborative aspect because, yeah, I think, you know, for a lot of us, we have that hoarder in our life, that prepper, um, <laughs> saving cans and water and, and who knows what else. But is that going to be the best way, you know, to survive the, the transformation of the country, of the world? I don't know, but I do know it seems wiser to me to surround yourself with others um, that you can be, that you can exchange with that that yeah, there can be that really that collaborative effort that we all get through this together. Because if we look to history, that's how we always have gotten through pivotal moments uh, together. And so I also love the way that you have, yeah, maybe you are a little crazy to love the chaos so much, but that's why I love you, man. You always bring such a bright light to the subject matter. And you have this incredible way, no matter what, of always staying focused on the silver lining. Like, Jack, Jackie Silver Lining Mancuso, like that should be your your <laughs> middle name because you just, you thread it out of there. Like no matter the topic or the theme that we're talking about, I don't even, I barely even talk to you in a moment or a day or conversation where, where you're not doing that. You're just like, yeah, this is going on, but you're, you know, for a lot of people, what follows their butt is always the negative. It's like, uh, you know, this sucks. My life is trash and I'm, I think I'm dying. But for you, it's like, it's the opposite. It's like, yeah, I've had this going on, but, or I can see this ha happening, but then you have this beautifully positive portrait that is not just like a uh, fairy, you know, rainbows and unicorns shitting gold. It really is based in logic and, and like you have good reason. And, and so it, it, for being that feeling that way. So it affects people like me when I talk to you and it, it obviously affects others too. And so that that's a great way to put it when we're transitioning in, in a grander sense like this, because it's so easy to fall into the trap of negativity. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to fall in, into the pitfall of nothing's going right for me of, I don't know why I'm doing this anymore of, is anything ever going to change? So yeah, that transformational process for all of us looks and feels different. I love the way you always talk about healing that way. It looks the same for no two people. Healing that looks different, feels different for all of us. The same true for transformation and we're all going to feel that in different ways and feel these moments in different ways but 
when it comes down to it, you're right. Like with these eclipses being transitory and in, in themselves, they can be a little confusing because yeah, we're moving out of a theme that represented a, a period of time for like 18 months. Then we always have this window of like six months that are, you know, we have some signs like really magnetic and they're bleeding into the other one's magnetism and they're, they're swapping roles. And so even as an astrologer, it, it can be highly confusing when you're reading into this energy because everything truly blends all these stories blend together the the whole wave wave to wave blends together but one thing that could be helpful for people who are watching this is when you look at your own birth chart and if you haven't done so i highly encourage you go to one of these free websites or get a reading with someone like jackie um you or, or myself <laughs> you know, plug. um and you look at your whole natal chart the house arrangements, all of it. And you'll see one of the best ways to decipher periods of time like this and, and to understand what may show up for you or how it may affect you is to see this north and south that we've talked about or these eclipses themselves, what house they fall in. So I put that in quotes because it takes some understanding and research to know what the 12 houses are. But for anyone watching this, that can be super helpful is as we're going through an eclipse series or, or changing the tone like this, look at your birth chart and see where that north node is going to be entering. What house of yours? The south node, the same. Which ones are they leaving? What were the themes for the last ones? And how do you feel about that? What happened for you? What didn't happen for you? How do you feel that story plays into this next story for you? And then these eclipses, as they occur in certain houses, it can really help us understand what may be coming up for us or what to expect. Again, we can't ever completely predict but it can be super helpful, I find, um, to encourage people to do that for themselves because, you know, we all are student and teachers of each other, but we're also our own best student and teacher. So it really takes some some tuning in to ourself, again, Aries, to properly reflect on some of this so that we have that self-starters energy we need to, to be motivated or inspired about anything. Like we need to know like, A, what our purpose is and our goals and all of this. But then B and, and C and onward, we need to know how to how to take advantage of certain waves of momentum that may be coming our way or how to avoid certain challenges that, that could be on the horizon or how to navigate the ones that we're coming out of. Like, let that go. And, and you know, the past is the hardest part, I think, Jackie, for a lot of us. Um, again, I, I have a hard time even talking to you about this because you feel so positive to me. It's like Jackie is that dealt with her, you know, she just rides the waves of uh, destruction like that other, man. She's a cosmic <laughs> surfer. But for a lot of people, you know, that that we work with, letting go of those pasts, those breakups, that loss in your life, that family member, loved one, or that job loss, that change that just happened, um, coming to terms with that emotionally can be really difficult. And knowing how to find methods and support systems and put those in place and how to bring one's focus back to themselves. Like, and that's what this Aries time is going to be about. That is where it starts. It all, you know, everything starts with ourself. So if Aries is that self-starting, that warrior within ourselves and that, that energy that we're going to go out and do it, do something for ourselves here and make sense of the situation and make the most of it. And, you know, as the eclipses again move backwards, what comes after this one? It's going to be the 18 month era of Pisces of self love. It all comes back to the self. So, for so many of us, yeah, we we're letting go, um, and we will be for 18 months. And this eclipse window is going to highlight it brilliantly of the people, places, and things, those relationships with those three that don't serve, that haven't for some time now, basically so that we can create space to cultivate and allow in all the new ones that do those like minds and beautiful souls and new places we haven't seen new jobs we don't have yet we got to make way for it man and that requires the letting go so that th even though this is in taurus this full moon the last one was in scorpio as we've ended this Tor taurus scorpio cycle and that is the axis truly if there is one of transformation and of letting go just letting the past go and so let's head into this new moon together with that mindset of like fresh start no matter what shit show the summer may have, have been for anyone watching this how beautiful it may have been even write that chapter off and sign it with gratitude and let's move into something new together and uh and apart because that's how i always 
put it when I talk about Libra and Aries, it's togetherness, but it's it's the apartness too. It's the self. So um, yeah, Hermit Me is glad to be back. So back and, and thanks for having me here. I do feel like probably I, I should go do another na- uh, nasal rinse, another neti pot. I've been doing this twice a day. I don't know if they're helping. God, I need something. But um, sickness, purging, detox. Yeah, I'm in it, man. But I'm glad you had me on to talk about this with you today. So especially before your retreat. Um, So how do you want to end this? What do you, anything you want to touch on as we wrap up your hour here? I was going to ask if there's any last things that you wanted to give as like general advice for people, but I felt like you were already doing that. I guess I kind of did that. Yeah. (laughs) So I guess, do you just have any general messages for my listeners or um, where can they reach out to you? How can they find you? So one message I have is that being in service to the self is not selfish. It's, it can be if it's the, again, to the detriment of somebody else and and something like that. But ultimately I highlight what you said earlier, when we are filling our cup, when we are putting things in place for ourselves that are the utmost benefit, when we're bringing, doing things that bring ourselves happiness and joy, when we're, doing things that are uh, action oriented for ourselves, man, those ultimately make ourselves brighter. And yes, it's so expensive for everyone around us. So we overflow with that and everyone benefits everyone. So just because we're focusing on ourselves, and that's going to be a theme for months to come, doesn't mean it's selfish. It's not selfish to get your hair done, your nails done, or your guy to go to, you know, to invest some money in fantasy football or do whatever just brings you joy, man. Like, yeah, your wife may nag you about this or buy some new clothes for yourself. You know, it could be anything, but do things for yourself every now and again um, that are for yourself because that matters. It really does. Where to find me? I'm not out there in the world at large on any social platforms or TikToking it up or anything like that yet. But people, um, if you are interested, peoples of the world, or anyone's uh, beautiful people watching Jackie here. You can find, you can just email me for a session at maxofnashville at gmail.com. And sorry, my voice has gotten progressively nasal, uh, more nasally here, but it's uh, M A X of O F Nashville, the city at gmail.com. And you can just reach out to me that way. Beautiful. I'll put your email in the show notes so that people can just click and copy and paste and all of that stuff. Thank you so much for talking through this while you are having this sinus flare up. Um, If you have a second afterwards, I can give you some tips. Uh, But thank you for being here. And hopefully we'll see you back in the near future. I hope so, too. I do appreciate it, friend. (laughs) Thank you. Hey, I'm going to do a quick voice memo. It's easier than typing. Um, A, I can't remember if you've already left yet to your meditation retreat. And if so, you'll hear this in 10 days. But I can't help but to feel after seeing all of this unfold, which is so heartbreaking in the Israeli-Palestinian thing that, you know, we missed the mark a little, dude. I mean, the one thing we didn't hit on in that podcast or in our discussion was at the heart of the meaning in the Aries-Libra axis, of course, is war and peace. And it's the most obvious one. And for that reason, it was one I didn't even think to touch on because it's like, it's so obvious, you know, everyone who even blinks at astrology knows this. Um, and then what are the odds that just days after we record that, we get this massive unfolding of events? And, you know, I'm one who's been, you know, sort of off and on really in tune with what's gone on in those areas. And it's much deeper than just terrorist attack from Hamas on Israel or whatever, whatever. You know, when you really hear from some of the Palestinian voices and you put a lot of this in context to how this situation has reached this point, that's when you really bring out the Libra side of, I feel, of the Aries part of the war here, which is human rights, uh, dignity, compassion, yeah, peace, equality, balance and freedom. And how when those things are missing to such a deep degree, yeah, you get the Aries lashing out, of course, upset like these yeah, atrocities against the Israelis um, that we saw in their southern towns and stuff when the Hamas group you know, came over. Sorry, my cats are nuts. But nonetheless, if this doesn't really hit home onto what this transit means, these 18 months are in now, um, 
what we're seeing erupting in the world. And who knows, like China, Taiwan could be next. We could see this thing in Israel uh, branch out into some other countries in the Middle East, like Lebanon. The Hezbollah have been off and on, you know, involved with Israel for these same reasons over the years. Hope we don't see this. But this time, in a lot of ways, is terrifying. Uh, I don't know how you feel. Like, this is the part that, yeah, as the old world crumbles, like, the Aries Libra side and what this could bring out of us, because really at the heart of all of it worldwide it's the polarization, it's the left, the right, it's the building up of these forces against each other, these political parties, the ideologies, how they magnetize, they become even more radicalized, even more hate-filled, and, and those of us who are on the other spectrum are even more love-filled, but we have no voice in it, it feels. Um, only the people that are just screaming hate on social media, and it gets amplified and more amplified. And so I guess I say all this to you to say, like, this is something that's really worth talking about ongoing throughout these months to come is that anyone who tunes into astrology or wonders like, yeah, what do these eclipses mean? Really? Like what kind of energy is really being stirred up in the world? What can we really expect? Like what do we really need to watch out for in our own families, communities or, you know, the world at large and how this could spread um, and even pop up in the U S here through various factions and like organizations, like who knows what could happen in these months to come. But I just wanted to get some of these random thoughts out of my head and, send them to you um, so that you can reflect on them later. And I would love to hear your take on that too, maybe after your retreat, obviously, um, and after you've had some time to process that. But anyway, I hope the trip goes very well uh, in the ways that are unforeseen and magical and completely inner world meant for only you and no one else. Those beautiful ways, big downloads, big epiphanies, breakthroughs of the spirit. I hope you have all those things in store for you. And I can't wait to hear about it and only the ways that you can describe after it's all said and done, friends. So safe travels and trip. Uh, I don't know how far your retreat is from where you live, but I hope, I hope it's an internal adventure and a bit of an external one too. All right. Much love. I'll talk to you soon.